remember the value for a cylinder is going to be the base area times height. So for all these three cases over here, the value will be the base area times high. The base area here is, let's call that A, and the high, let's call the H. So the V, the value, let's call the V. So V will be equal to A times H, base area times high. Now, over here, we have a, a lot of uh, bread. So how can we find the value for this? Now we can slice this, okay? So we can slice this up into very thin slice, okay? So each one here, say, has a thickness to be delta x, okay? So we divide this interval from A to B into n subinterval, each with equal width, delta x. So the value for one slice over here, um, it's kind of like, uh, almost like a cylinder, right? So it will be base area times the high, which is a thickness here. So this base area, <clears throat> let's call that A. Now you divide this interval from A to B into N sub interval. And let's call this the I sub interval. And I pick a point on this, we pick an arbitrary point on each sub interval. And let's call x1, x2, x3, etc. And this is on the i interval, and let's call the xi. <clears throat> let's focus on this i slice over here. This slice over here, if, it, if it's very thin, so it's almost like a cylinder. So it will be base area times the thickness. Okay. Now the base area over here, um, let's think about that as the cross section area corresponding to this point xi. So axi is this cross-sectional area corresponding to this point down here xi, okay? And delta x over here is a thickness. So when you multiply this base area with the thickness, that will give you an approximation to the value for this slice over here. Now, when you slice the bread even thinner and thinner, and so you subdivide this interval from A to B into smaller and smaller, finer and finer subinterval. So you net angle to infinity. But then when you divide that subinterval into thinner and thinner, then the sum of those slides is getting closer and closer to the value of this object over here. Okay. So remember this is a V minus sum. When you net angle to infinity, the number of this V minus sum is defined to be this definite integral, uh, this definite integral from A to B. And delta x over here is going to be replaced by dx. And this xi here replaced by x. So the value for this solid will be equal to, to this definite integral, with this ax over here being the cross-sectional area. And the dx here, think about as the, the thickness of one slice right there. Now, first example, let's show that the value of a sphere of radius r is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So that was a formula that you probably remember. Uh, if you have a sphere with the radius to be r, the value is given by this formula over here, right? Okay. Now, Let's use calculus to, do, uh, to prove this today. So if we place the sphere, so then the center is at the origin, then this, and then we're going to slice this sphere uh, this way. So we slice it this way, okay, perpendicular to this x-axis. So each slice over here is like a disk, okay? It's like a disk right here. Think about this solid is made up by adding all those slides, all those slides there. So for this disk over here, what will be this radius over here, this radius here, from here to here? Well, this point over here is a point on the circle. Let's label this point x comma y. So this radius over here for this disk is corresponding to the y coordinate of this point. So that's the y. 
Now, this circle over here satisfies this equation, x squared plus y squared equal to the r squared over here. y squared will be equal to r squared minus x squared. So that's y squared, okay? Now, let's try to find the value for one this right here. The value for one this here will be the base area, which will be pi y squared times the thickness. The thickness of this is delta x. So this is the value for one disk. Now we're going to sum up those disks. We sum them up. Okay, think about you add up all those disks right here. Okay. When you add them up, you get the whole sphere. Okay. So, so it will correspond to this integral of pi y squared and then um, delta x here replaced by dx x go from where to where so uh, x go from negative r to r negative r to r now because this is an integral uh, with respect to x so you want to express this y square in terms of x so express y square in terms of x y square is r square minus x square so we put it over here so that will become this integral over here Now, because this function here is an even function, and the symmetry of this upper limit and lower limit, r and negative r, this integral is equal to two times the integral from zero to r, because that's an even function. So I put the two outside, and then this integral from zero to r. Okay. Now, r square here, r here is the radius for the sphere. So for a given sphere, this r here is a constant. So the integral of r squared is going to be r squared times x plus c. So this one over here will be r squared x. Now, antiderivative of negative x squared is negative x cubed over 3. Now we just need to evaluate this from 0 to r. So we substitute r into x here. And we substitute zero into x here. Do the calculation. Indeed, that's equal to four over three times pi r cubed. So that's the value for a sphere with radius r. Okay. Example two. Find the value of the solid obtained by rotating about the x-axis, the region under the curve y equal to square root of x from zero to one illustrate the definition of the value by sketching a typical approximating cylinder. Or you can call it a disk, okay? So first, we have this y equals square root of x. This is a graph of y equals square root of x, right? Okay. So remember our dance move for square root of x, kind of like the Tai Chi move, okay? Okay, so now from zero, x go from zero to one, so it will be this curve here. And then you're going to rotate this about this x-axis. So this symbol here indicating that it is rotating about this x-axis, okay? Then we're gonna get a solid like this. So that's the resulting solid, okay? Now we try to find the value for this solid over here. So we're gonna slice them this way. Okay, so slice them this way. So, so each slice is going to be a disc perpendicular to this x-axis. Okay. So this is a, what they call that a, the approximating uh, cylinder. Okay, but you can also call it a disc. Okay. So first of all, this region over here, when we slice that we got a disk of the disk over here with the radius over here to be what? Now this point is a point on that curve. Let's label the x comma y. The radius over here corresponding to the y coordinate. Okay. So the value for this disk will be the base area times the thickness. The base area will be pi y squared. 
So that will be pi times square root of x squared because y is equal to square root of n, okay? So the base area will be pi times square root of x squared. which simplify into pi times x. Now, the value for the disk will be this base area times the thickness. The thickness over here is this delta x, right here. So, there'll be pi times y squared times delta x, and then because the delta x over here, you want to express this y squared in terms of x. So that will be pi times square root of x squared times delta x. So that's equal to pi times x delta x. So the solid is going to lie between x equal to 0 and x equal to 1. So the value over here, think about you add up all those disks. So that will be equal to the integral the integral of this right here uh, x go from 0 to 1. Now find the antiderivative of pi times x is pi times x squared over 2 and when you evaluate this okay I think they forgot this when they evaluate this, x go from 0 to 1, then substituting over here, then you get pi over 2. So this solid over here has a value to be pi over 2. 